Hello YouTube, it's Snack from Curse Nest, and in this video I'm going to be going over some Synchro Cat stuff. Yes, I know this is 44 cards. Uh, in almost any deck I would tell you that's bad. I do have a reason for that, and it's because um, this deck there's lots of normal summons. Like, it's really hard to play fewer than 18 or so, but I'd really prefer to play more, so that's what I'm doing, and I'm kind of diluting them with spells and traps. Anyways, <laughs> uh, this is a deck that I sort of created. I'm sure somebody was playing something similar before me, but at least in recent Edison years, I was, I think, one of the first people to put the plants and the Synchro Cat stuff together. There's some synergies, which you'll see in the gameplay. I'm going to show those. I am going to show gameplay from an internal tournament that we held uh, for our team. I did all right. I think I went like seven and three. Played against Carpath, Yomero, Aris, Gia, Corinna, and Fen. And a lot of them I played twice. But, anyways, I'll do like a deck profile towards the end. But I think it makes the most sense to just kind of show you how the deck works and then do the deck profile so that you kind of understand what I'm saying when I when I explain what a card's function is in the deck. And I guess I'll give you a quick primer. This deck, it hasn't topped before, but it's been on that, like, it's been really close to topping several times. For Ribbit 4, um, it actually got ninth right here. They call it Saber Plant on Format Library. Also, at Deck Devastators 3, it was like, it bubbled, so it didn't quite get top 12 for a chance to make it into top 8, but there was a player who went 6 and 2 and just lost due to tiebreakers, but was playing this deck, so. It's kind of respectable and I think you'll see in the replays that I'm going to show that even against good players on good decks it can perform and I think it's really fun. It's my favorite deck by far. Uh, hard for me to put it down so I guess I'll get into that. Alright so the first match is against Carpath and he's on uh, Chaos Fairies. It's the deck that he won Deck Devastators 3 with. Um, this is in like a pools format, so I had to play Corinna twice, Carpath twice, and Fen. Uh, I would have played Fen twice, but she was already not going to be able to make it out of the pool, so I ended up only playing her once. Some of these games are actually on Carpath's channel, so you can see his take on some of the analysis. These two games are, at least. So I lose RPS. Um, turn one, I'm thinking Dandy and Raika both lose to Caius. But Dandy combos with the rest of my hand a lot better. It works with Lone Fire or with Cat or with Caius. So that's the first move I made was to just set the Dandy. But then he dust shoots me after I set the Dandy. Um, and then at that point, I didn't want to set the Dust Tornado because he knows that's what it is. And I figured if I draw a back row, I can set something different other than Dust Tornado. So Warrior Lady is like the worst. <laughs> that's like the worst possible option it could have been. Um, yeah, so here I set the Raiko and the Dust, obviously. This is also really bad for me. Edison things are happening. Um, this is just what happens when you get behind tempo sometimes. Let's see. I could have gone Summon Lone Fire, Tribute for Tomato, Crash into Angel, and then Summon Monk. Use Monk to pitch Heavy to Summon Arcanite in defense, and then pop whatever he summons off of the Angel. But obviously that, that that's really bad if Carpath uses Herald on like any step of that chain, or if he summons Dialk and I just end up having to pop a Dialk and letting him float, like... And in addition to that, I'm losing Heavy and Monk for like a really low impact play, so... I figured just setting the Raiko made the most sense. So here I can actually go for the Titanial. This is fairly obvious. Uh, fairies actually are really good at dealing with Titanial because they have Honest and DD War Lady, with both, which both just clear it in battle. Here, I think, um, speaking of Honest, I I think he goes to a battle here, yeah. That's why I had to set the D Prison, or was it Mirror Force or D Prison? I forget. But I had to set the Battle Trap because I know that she gets cleared by battle by fairies. Oh, a book. That's what it is. <laughs> so yeah, I, I knew I had to book that because... Obviously, he has Honest there, but... Uh, this part sucks because I just have to tribute my Titanial. I'm not getting, like, the best value out of her, but... I didn't think I could just let him have board presence. And if it was Raiko, I'd get punished, too, so... That seemed correct. 
um, dusting there worked out obviously in my favor because it was decree. And the thing is like he knew whatever this was was going to eat a dust tornado because he knew my sets but he still said it anyway and i guess like if i didn't end phase hit it then that decree was going to negate the dust so or at least i would have had to chain dust in in uh in chain to the decree being flipped on another one of my traps or something yeah here i have the kaya so i feel like i can it's okay if i attack into gores And then he mills the gores, which is nice. Here, once again, like we don't Caius here, because if he has like Trag or something, if I Caius here, banish the trooper to prevent the draw, then if he drops like a Trag on the attack, he can follow it up with like maybe a Caius of his own or steal it with something. So I think generally with this deck, the, at least the way I play it, I play it much slower and like conservatively, I don't push. It's a lot about um, reserving your cards and not overcommitting at any point. It's a very control deck, which I think the other style of Synchro Cat deck is a lot more aggressive. This one's a lot more, you know, like laid back. So he's worried about deep prison, which I think is why he didn't attack. But we also were reading the Honest earlier, and also this thing floats, so there's not really much point of attacking. So I think. I don't think I attack either. <laughs> We're just kind of staring at each other. Yeah, I pass right back. He Caius's, and I can still clear his Caius, which is fine. Uh, he can't set that because <laughs> he needs some Caius. So Hamster is a really good draw because they have a tough time clearing that. Avarice is pretty sick, I think. Oh, yeah, I think we have to Foolish to turn Avarice alive, but that's fine. Rather than like flipping the hamster first. So Cat is lethal there, he, he, and he knows it, so he just scoops right there. Okay, so game two, I don't open great. <laughs> like, Monk is our only play on this hand. So I just decided to go for it, and I figured if that's Decree, then I'm like doing pretty well. Um, I shouldn't have pitched the book, I should have pitched Smashing Ground instead. Oh no no, never mind. That, that was probably correct. Because we had two traps. Normally you don't want to pitch book if you don't have like actual protection. You would pitch like the smashing ground or something. But if you have protection then pitching book is fine. Okay yeah, the, I, I remember this play. <laughs> so I go for Arcanite here. Normally if you have like an effect like dad or something, you always go after the monster first. Or if you Caius, you go after a monster because if it's bottomless, right? Obviously, this isn't gonna hit. Is this is not going to get hit by bottomless or torrential or anything? <clears throat> so, it actually, I think it's probably correct to hit the back row, and you'll see why. <laughs> um, like I, I don't have Pryo anyway, so there's nothing I'm doing with Pryo. If he has Compulse, he can just Compulse right now. Uh, so it actually makes sense to go after the back row first because of my body. So now I, I get punished big time for that. My body's pretty, like, I wasn't expecting my body, but it's still worth playing around. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to set Salem because I didn't want to pay all those life points. Uh, Deox annoying, so you go for the deep prison, obviously. Yeah, just, I wasn't afraid of him having a deep prison because he, I know he's on the decree, so he can't be on that many traps was my thought process at least. And if I can get this Caius to go off like by tributing Sangin, that's also really good for me. So I'd probably go for Caius here, right? MST also gives us insurance against Decree. Um, so yeah, I can solemn that torrential and now here um i think I, I choose to mst this because there's a good chance like if it's return if it's return we need to mst it before it's his turn so he can't get like a big crackback play on us and if it's like a battle trap we want to do it before caius so it makes sense to just do it before battle phase i think like we can't let him we can't let this trap survive until his turn i think 
There's nothing for debris in graveyards, so that's why we got the Lone Fire. And also it means that like, uh, we're less likely to draw a dead Titanial, if you search out the Lone Fire, that is. So he does have Gores, which kind of punishes the MST in main phase one, but we have Smashing for it, so it's not the worst situation for us. Um, just ends up passing. He knows we have Lone Fire, which would be lethal, so he has to Herald there. I just set Heavy as a bluff, and that's lethal. <laughs> So that's nice. Next game is also going to be against Carpath. So in pools, I went, um, I went two and zero against Corinna, one and zero against Fen, and I, I'm so far I'm one and zero against Carpath. And then this is the final game I played in pools, or the group stage, or whatever you want to call it. So I lost RPS again. Once again, like, there's just like a bad, being behind tempo sucks in this format. This is part of the reason why Cyber Dragons, I think, is so good. It's because you can flip tempo when you're going second. And Cyber Dragon pairs with Air Bellum, like, really, really well. But yeah, so we never do well against, like, Raiko Kai stuff, so I kind of just have to hope that it's a, like, a fairy, like, um, Shining Angel or something. So I probably set Raiko because it sets up for a debris on, on, in the future, it makes our debris actually get value. Even if it's just an iron chain. Yeah. And I set the prison in case it's like... I mean, I have two battle traps, so it doesn't really matter. But... Yeah, Raiko Kaius things happen again. <laughs> There's just, like, not much you can do about that. That's just kind of how Edison works. I think anybody who plays has an idea that this is sort of an inevitability. Once again, Raiko is the best card <laughs> for us to play. Kais is a bigger threat, so we pop it. We don't want to get give him the float off of Card Trooper in case we draw something like Brain Con. We can sync with Card Trooper and Bellum. Um, let's see here. I think I go for Sang in here. Yeah. So my idea here is next turn, if this Sang survives, next turn I can synchro it with Air Bellum, and then I'm like, I think my Avarice will be live at that point too. So, going Airbellum and hanging into a 6 is a pretty nice play. So this is like, doesn't feel good, but like I said, like if we can, um, he doesn't have a monster here, so if we're able to connect with Airbellum, then we get a rip and we get a search off Sangin and we get the Avarice, so that was my idea was like, we can flip tempo, we can become the aggressor instead of being on the back foot for the rest of the game. And yeah. And also this deck just like generally, because you have so many normal summons, you kind of have to protect them from time to time. Uh, because if you're constantly like empty board, summon something, it gets cleared. Next turn, summon something, it gets cleared. Like you just are, tempo matters. <laughs> so we're not, obviously not afraid about Mirror Force because Sangin will float. It forces out a Battle Fader, which is like kind of fine. Here, I make a misplay because um, I should have gone into Brio. I could have gone Brio and then use Sangin Effect to search Dandy, pitch Dandy with Brio to banish the Battle Fader and I would have gotten the tokens and I still have the Avarice, so. And then I would also have the Dandy engraved for Debris on the follow-up, but instead I just went for a Goyo, because Goyo is like normally the, if I don't have an idea what I want to do, like if I can't decide what to do, Monk is normally just like a good search because it's just such a powerful play, but um, if I don't know what six to go into, I, just I normally just go into Goyo, because I hate leaving Brio up with the potential threat of Brain Con or something, and also I like keeping Brio in the extra deck in case that's like a lethal win con kind of a thing but definitely should have gone brio here because i would have actually gotten value on the fader i think i end up drawing foolish here and i end up foolishing because i i remember not feeling safe at all like i don't have any traps i have track but especially like with the threat of honest and stuff I just don't feel safe at all in this situation. So I foolish for Dandy just to give myself a little bit more protection. 
my life points are just kind of low. So she clears the token. Here, I I could have gone into titanium, I think, at this point, but I was feeling like a torrential. Don't know why. I was just feeling torrential at this point. <laughs> so I decided I would rather set dandy, I'm pretty sure. I just swing and then set dandy. Because that, that actually gives me more protection. Because he might think, oh, I can torrential and then like do something uh once your board is clear but it wouldn't actually clear my board at this point so does shoot happens i'm just gonna try swinging over and over again <laughs> and hopefully he has to like do something desperate to out the goyo i think here my plan is to set raiko because next turn i could flip raiko like hypothetically but for, forget about this Dioc for a second. Next turn, I could flip right, go pop. If this was like a recruiter, I could pop this. And then if he doesn't torrential, well, then I'm just hitting it in and with Goyo again, which is fine. Um, if he does torrential, then I get the two tokens with uh, Dandy and I get to summon Lone Fire and make tight with two plants on board. So that was my plan for next turn. Uh, but I don't get a next turn because he has double honest. Yeah, so this is a hand that you just pass on. <laughs> uh, Savages are great. You know, I, if I had, had Savage are going second last game and not had it going first this game, it might have been nice. But still having Savage here is okay because I get to Kai's that. Like, Savage isn't the best thing to be tributing for Kai's, but I think it was still the correct play there. He has his own Kai's, which I can clear off the board. I just set sang in or maybe Raiko, yeah because i was if, if it's gores i don't want to sang in run into gores and then i have nothing to clear it with so if i set the Raiko first then i can do the same thing and this is nice because i get to make it miss timing i don't know how many plant oh yeah i had i just made avarice live but then i drew another avarice which is kind of funny So here I felt fine because I now have Smashing Ground for Gores and then like uh, Caius, Sidra, Sidra Caius on like a follow up play potentially. Uh, once again, like just banishing the monsters is so much better than running them over in general. Uh, it forces out a Herald, but I get to search Monk and my hand is like kind of cracked. <laughs> I've got a bunch of spells to pitch with it. And going Sidra then Monk is even better than just uh, Hard Summon Monk because then you don't have to lose the other Airbellum. You get to Synchro into an 8 plus the Arcanite. And you get to actually do damage because I could go Arcanite, pop his monster, hit for Bellum, rip the card, hit for 21, make like Stardust plus Arcanite with one more pop. And it's hard for them to even clear Arcanite in defense in the first place without like DD War Lady. But unfortunately, that card that he just drew in set is like the only thing that stops my play, that being Dust Shoot. And the other card in his hand is also an impactful one. <laughs> uh, this is probably dumb. I probably shouldn't have even swung here. I probably should have just like stayed. Because I figured that like if it's a recruiter, I can just smashing whatever it summons. And then I'm like kind of in a commanding spot with him only having one card in hand. I'm applying pressure all that stuff but um it being a fairy <laughs> i didn't think about this it being a fairy means that like even if it was shining angel he could go into like a dd war lady maybe of course i think i found out his deck only plays one so maybe if it had been a shining angel and then i smash and ground this the thing he summons i would have been fine but now he's on four fairies is the point <laughs> or maybe he would have had to not activate the effect of shining angel anyways yeah the card in his hand was christian and now, like, everything I have is uh, kind of invalidated by Christia. My whole deck special sums a lot, and I have outs. Uh, I just don't draw them. So I, I do have an out here, which is to Smashing the Christia and then make Cataster. That's why I like Foolish, is because it lets you... It's kind of an extender in this deck, just as, like, two free tokens <laughs> that let you synchro with stuff. 
and I do get to Avarice here. Um, hopefully I could draw into some like actual protection, like a bottomless would be insane. <laughs> uh, it would stop the Christia. But currently I know the answer doesn't help. I, there's a chance I maybe should have just allured there because like these cards are doing nothing for me. Uh, but I know that he has this line because if I crash, well, I'm not going to run into this in the first place because there's no reason to give him a free battle phase. I have to force him to use a battle phase by to crash his own Dialk. But if I run into this, he grabs Caius out of Banished and then he can special the Christia and then tribute Christia to banish the Cataster and then he'll be able to summon Christia again next turn. So it's like very looping Christia is just like extremely annoying and being able to recycle things like Caius is also a really strong point of his deck. The way Deox are just so insane in his deck because they get such good utility cards. So yeah, he f he sees that same line. Adding back Deox, Caius, uh, and I drew another out, sort of, but <laughs> I know he's got Christia. So like, worst case, he can just like kind of crash and then his will float to the top, but I did set this allure to like maybe like bluff a D-Prison. Yeah, this is like not eventful, but then he finds a way to get the fourth fairy engrave by tributing the Sidra over it. And now my dandy doesn't do anything. My Sidra can't special itself. It's just pretty miserable. He has Honest too, so he doesn't even crash the Christ yet. Uh, here I just want to go for the Blind Dolores, so I'm trying to get everything out of my hand. Obviously I can't special a Sidra. <laughs> but I do find something off the Allure, and I finally find Deep Prison. And he still respects it. He respects Mirror Force and Deep Prison here. I have to hit that one because like I had to hit one of these or else it was going to be lethal. I chose to hit the one that uh, floats and yeah, my hand is dead. So that sucked. The fortunate dust shoot draw. So anyways, like I said, I go, I went four and one in the group stage with my only loss being to Carpath. So now it's round one of our top cut and I'm against Yomero. Yomero topped He's topped with Glads, and he's also topped with Diva Hero at, I think it was RBET1. Uh, he's playing Diva Hero here, which you might be surprised because he, I think he's more known as a Glad player. But he's an extremely aggressive player in general. I draw kind of, I hate drawing Titanial, but it happens. He's an extremely aggressive player, both on Glads and Diva Hero. He just likes to pressure you and uh, kind of force your force your open to be strong <laughs> like uh you better have it kind of a mentality which i think actually works for the two decks that he plays the most it works pretty well for those strategies so the whole time this is happening i'm like great i don't have anything to stop this <laughs> um and i'm like the thing that really destroys my entire hand is caius <laughs> But I had the dust shoot, so I'm like, okay, if he has only one Caius, I can dust shoot it away. Hamster is like the only thing that makes sense is like an actual starter. So I do dust shoot. His hand is Allure, Prodigy, Caius, and Solemn. So he goes for the Allure, and he draws Caius off of it. <laughs> right after I put it back in his deck. So at this point, I am extremely tilted, and everything I do from this point on makes no sense. Well, for the most part. Like, I, I, I just stopped using my brain. Um, I do have the allure to get, uh, to convert the Sork into something helpful. My plan here was to go for Android and to book down the Stardust, run it over with Android, gain 600, set Torrential, and then when Abzira comes down, blow up the field. But he has the Solemn for a cat, which was just like, it just felt like, of course I knew he had Solemn. Like I said, I was, uh, I mean, I knew something was getting Solemn, I guess, either the book or the cat, I don't know. But 
what I didn't see here is I actually have a way to clear this entire field, which is if I book the Stardust and Draw phase here, and then Torrential, when the Ab Zero is forced to come down, I can clear all three monsters. And then potentially I could get back in the game just by like poking with Bella, maybe ripping cards. But uh, I didn't see it until <laughs> I was thinking about Torrential here. And then I literally, if you look in the chat, I say, <laughs> I realized that I could have booked and cleared this whole field and that like actually tilted me even more to, to where I just literally scooped right there. I mean, I was losing that game no matter what, but I normally try and play them out. Um, if for no other reason, then it helps my teammates practice like every situation, helps them play around things. And I drew Titanial again, so like my, <laughs> my mental state is not getting any better set dandy because if he runs it over I can normal summon titanium and get it out of my hand and then I can project tit titanium with the two traps so so far things are going pretty well now this is another matchup that titanium is actually not that great against because it doesn't do much against ab zero it, like they just crash and destroy it they make Cataster super easy and Cataster just destroys her and then additionally I don't even have tokens like a naked titanial isn't that good because it just trades one for one with Caius so I figured like it's fine to just run this into back row and it does eat a mirror force so if it's a mirror force or deep prison it doesn't matter it's the same thing it's the same result there At this point, I don't know what I was doing. This is a stupid thumbs up. <laughs> I saw him this. this. Like, 10 times out of 10, you saw him this. But like I said, I wasn't thinking straight. I'm thinking like, oh no, Cataster, all kinds of stuff. Like, I don't know why I didn't just saw him this immediately. Even just letting them get the Gilman puts more waters in play. It's just, just dumb. So everything after this point is a mistake. And yeah. He goes into Brio, and at this point I'm like, I, I wanted to save the song for a Miracle Fusion or something, which is stupid because he just bounces it, obviously. <laughs> so, and now he can just Miracle Fusion anyway. <laughs> and then he can stack the Plague, and it's actually lethal. Stack for Plague. So yeah, that was a swift 2-0 in the first round of Top Cut where I drew Titanium in both games, and Yomero does not give you a chance to draw bad. If you draw bad, you lose. <laughs> uh, and I played dumb. <laughs> the second game was definitely a lot more winnable than the first one. Next, I'm up against Aris. He topped the RBCT with Black Wings, uh, the first charity tournament, that is. Uh, Black Wings are normally pretty tough against these uh, decks that have Lots of special summoning, lots of small monsters. I do draw Brain Con, which is a good card. <laughs> Raikou is a good starter. I finally won RPS. Bottomless is like one of the best traps you can have against Black Wings. Uh, it stops Whirlwind, and just like getting Black Wings off the field, and especially if you can get them banished, is really good. I knew it's on pure Black Wings too, which is often kind of monster light. So if I can just keep him off monsters forever, that's like kind of my game plan to beat Black Wings. <laughs> so bottom was that. My plan here is to go for a debris foolish into Stardust. But in order to do that, I, I, I'm not going to do that into two back row. So I want to flip the Raigo first. Unfortunately, <laughs> the one I hit is Dust Shoot, which he had saved. So that one hurts a ton. <laughs> Uh, and the fact that he sends Caius, like, maybe should have tipped me off. Because, like, if he knows this is my hand, he's got to have an answer for it. Uh, Caius is, like, your best play under oppression. And, uh, Debris is not your best play under oppression. <laughs> and the back row is indeed impression. <laughs> so I'm in, like, a really vulnerable spot here. Like, Shura would just murder me. So I set the D prison. I think he knows that, so he wants to... I, I'm pretty sure he has sure in his hand, actually, but I don't know that at this point. I'm thinking, if you're summoning Bora, maybe that's your only Blackwing. I can clear that, and then, like, let's hope that I have some good draw on the next turn. 
But if it had been Shura and he runs over Raiko, then I'm just like, he clears Raiko and a token and he makes something. It just would have been a lot worse. Or I guess he doesn't make something under oppression, but you get the idea. It, it would like set up for an Icarus, like give him a value to tribute for Icarus. And I have a bunch of things on my side of the field, so I can't play around Icarus at this point. But he summons the Bora, I think, because he just wants to bait out the back row because he wants the Shura to actually go through. He does bait out the back row successfully because I'm like, I just want to get this thing out of here and not let you, not let you revive it with Blizzard or anything. Like, just please don't have any monsters. <laughs> I draw what is a very good draw, which is Bellum. And Bellum's pretty underrated because it is just a plus one every time it hits. And that was a really big hit for me. So I get lucky there to maybe compensate for my bad luck on the death shoot 50-50 that I missed with Raiko. He's kind of forced to book there. <laughs> uh, I'm not respecting Torrential because it's Black Wings. Yeah, so here I do hit the Oppression. Stardust is generally really good against Black Wings. It stops Icarus and stuff. If he had Icarus at this point, he would have already flipped it like a long time ago, I feel like. Or at least in response to this. Uh, before I can Synchro, because obviously I'm going to Synchro into a Stardust if I can. Uh, so I have an idea that's not Icarus. But then also, like, because Eris is on my team, I actually know that he was thinking about potentially running Morphing Jar. So I do play around that. But um, I'm also choosing to play around Snowmaneater and Fossil Dino, which you'll sometimes see as set monsters in Black Wings. And once again, those are just like, everything is stopped by Stardust in that situation. So yeah, I put everything on the field in case it's Morphing Jar, which it is. He had a dead dad, which was locked under his own oppression. And, I'm, and I kept his Blacklings out of the grave, so it didn't matter. And I draw MST for Whirlwind. And I think that was Solemn, right? <laughs> oh, book. MST and book. So Stardust does get outed by Blizzard, which is why you have to set the book. And you don't have to fear heavy with Stardust as much. I mean, they can force out the Stardust with like an Icarus and then heavy you, but still. So here I book the Shura, and that is because... Oh, because I have the Brinkon. Yeah, I have Brinkon and Minecon, so I want to steal this and then use it to synchro with my own cards. That makes sense. That's fine, you can clear the token, and then I figure if that's like deprison, like I already hit with Stardust and he would have deprisoned, so this back row has been doing nothing at all. So obviously you hit the new one. Uh, here he knows this is Brain from the Dust Shoot earlier, so I flipped that one rather than using the Minecon to preserve info. I mean, that's kind of obvious too, you just like want to get your your bluff back row off the field as much as you can. <laughs> so it's not that big brain or anything, but... So yeah, I, I, I obviously knew that was Shura because I booked it. <laughs> so there's no point in just like taking 200 damage with Sangin for no reason. At this point, I'm like kind of fine with him just uh, going into this because it lets me <laughs> get my uh, monk. He goes into Armor Master, which is good, and he sets five, but like, I'm in a really strong spot here. So here the play is to, I could go for Arcanite, but there's it makes no sense. What you should do here, and why one of the reasons why Cat is strong, one of the advantages it has at least, is that Mistworm is super easy to make. Monk plus any spell is Mistworm. because you just go for Arabellum and Raiko, and that's nine. So I go for Mr. Room, and he is absolutely forced to stall on that. So then I mine Con, because I would have had lethal with Stardust. Uh, and he's forced to Icarus, which is great for me, because I can just, he gets like zero value off of it. And I get to set Solemn, so like my next turn is gonna be insane. And I draw Swork, which is another lethal threat. He has Bottomless, which I can Stardust. And then he has Deep Prison, which I Solemn. <laughs> so 
so that was a pretty crazy game <laughs> that bell and ripping sure was like the biggest thing but you know that's 50 50s we both uh i missed one and then i hit one so so <laughs> i think game two uh, starts out with me getting dust shooted again so that's like two games in a row that start out with me getting dust shooted So I just clear that because I don't like black wings on the field. <laughs> um, and I can, uh, if I go sang in Torrential, the next black wing, I can also just um, search Monk off of it and clear it off the field as well. Him having black wings on the field just means that like Kalut, Gale, Borja, Icarus, all of those are live. He knows my hand, <laughs> uh, and obviously Monk is scary. Uh, but I'm not. I don't want to. I don't feel want to do it into two back row. I have trap stun, <laughs> so I can just set dandy set trap stun, and then on the next turn, I can trap stun and force through the Monk play. Um. Obviously, Blizzard stuff is happening. He doesn't know what this card is. He's probably thinking Raiko. This is actually even better for me. <laughs> Having tokens when you go for your cat play is better because like the sevens and the fives are just a lot worse than the eights and the sixes. So having the tokens to let you get into like the better level synchros, that's a big reason why Dandelion is nice. Uh, here I should have flipped Trash Stun preemptively, because if this is like, when I summon the Bellum, if he goes bottomless and I Trap Stun and he chains Icarus, then the Trap Stun did nothing. Or if he has Solemn for when I try and chain the Trap Stun to his trap, then the Trap Stun did nothing. So. When they have more than one trap, it's funny because like that's like one of the advantages of trap stun <laughs> is that you can uh, potentially blank more than one trap, more than one back row. But in a lot of situations, you should actually just pre flip it preemptively and use it like a cold wave. But lucky for me, uh, neither of those punish situations came up. Pop that one because I want to play around Kalut. And then I run that over, obviously, and then I can rip a card. I probably make Android here. And I do rip a clue, which is funny, so I definitely played around it correctly. Catastrophe just doesn't do anything against a dark deck, especially with um, Armed Wing. And then I figured these back row haven't done anything, let me Arcanite pop it, whatever it is. And I did end up hitting a bluff, which is nice. And then additionally, like, if you leave Arcanite on the board, with a token, especially with 1400, like they can just crash a clue into it and then they like kind of, they almost go plus in a sense because like they got rid of a pop that you had or they can run it over Ashura. Also, if they have Brain Con or Mind Con, then they can steal it and then pop your cards <laughs> before doing something with it. So Arcanite, usually you want to use both pops when you summon it. It sucks to have to leave it in attack, but it is what it is. It's gotten its value already. But I think I'm in a pretty good spot here. So we saw Morphing Draw last game, so I play around it again. Not much happening. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Oh, here was a weird one because I have a good play where I flip Raiko, pop this, and then tribute them both for tight, which is really good because I get to, tight is like perpetual insurance for Icarus attack, and it gets these like little weenies off the board <laughs> that aren't doing much and can get run over. So I go for the monster, change Torrential, which I chain Trap Stun, and then like this, I'm milling and I just like straight up forgot that I was going to summon Titanium. This happens to me a lot. <laughs> That's like the main thing that I mess up in my games is I just like get halfway through a play and then I forget where I was going with it. So I would have had him at 200, I think. Yeah. 
but at least I remembered to sewn it in my face too. Uh, Titanium is lethal, so it forces out any back row. And I think here I have next play. I have lethal. Oh, I have mirror force here too. Because I can right go that on my turn and then hit with <coughs> these two for twenty six. But I draw something even better, which is Kai's. Obviously, you go after the back row. Whatever it is, it wasn't doing anything all game. <laughs> I guess uh, he didn't want to flip that into trap stun because if he does, then he's locked under his own oppression. That's one thing why trap stuns are really, really good. Is if you go, if you do your big play, and you flip trap stun on their oppression when they're trying to stop you, then you're even you're in an even better spot because it normally takes a special summon to out like Titanial plus Stardust or Arcanite plus something else, you know. So now I'm against Blackwing again, and this is Gia. She topped I think RBT one with Hero Beat. Once again, I lose RPS. This is a pretty good hand. If I just set Raiko. No, no, no. <laughs> I should have just set Raiko, I think. But I got greedy. I, I, you know, like I was hoping this is like Icarus, because sometimes a Blackwing player will like set Icarus. And then next turn, like, like maybe you set bottomless and then next turn when they summon a black wing you try and bottomless it they can icarus and like get value out of it <laughs> but i think i i think in general i just got greedy <laughs> i thought okay i got these i should just go crazy this is a huge misplay for me also setting the book was wrong normally mind control is stronger but since this is bottomless i now lost my tuners so mind control is a way weaker now it's like not doing anything Whereas book would have actually protected me from things. Also, if I waited on the monk play, I could have potentially gone cyber dragon into the monk play, which, as I mentioned earlier, is just like way stronger. She gets to use monk for herself, which is kind of insane. <laughs> like this is just like I deserve all of this for getting too aggressive. So here, obviously go for Sidra first, so that, uh, to play around Icarus. That's another reason why Sidra's nice. If she has Clute, she has Clute. Uh, but now I can summon the Titanial. And, uh, she's spending two cards to just out the Titanial at this point. And it's nice that the Lone Fire is sort of setting up for an, a potential Avarice. So here she, ooh, yeah, she forces out the Titanial to trade with Brio here. That's another thing that's like so nice about Titanial is like even Dad doesn't out it. Dad can't run it over and it can't pop it. So like, they have to lose a card to Titanial and let's say he's like Kalut. Definitely Avarice here. I think I Avarice into Lone Fire. Brain Con. <laughs> I do have a, and I leave the Dark Engrave. Um, Cause I want to steal this dad, obviously. I was thinking I was going to steal with Mind Con, but it, I steal, I draw Brain Con, which is even better. Like these are two great cards to be drawing. I see what's this wrong. I don't know what I was thinking. Like once again, halfway through a play, I summon the Lone Fire because I was thinking like I need to play around Deep Prison, but I forgot that I've been playing around Icarus this entire game. Like this is really stupid. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not the end of the world because I can still just hit for 28 and then pop itself. Uh, but the Gores isn't doing anything, obviously. And she already has an Armor Master, so yeah. <laughs> I lose that game. And I deserved it. <laughs> I deserved to lose it. Because I played terribly. <laughs> Blackwing Gaming. Uh, set Raiko, set D-Prison. Okay, makes sense. Pretty self-explanatory. 
she has to clear that in case it's uh bottomless honestly if she had heavy she still might have done that just because <laughs> making the black whirlwind search go off is really strong hitting bora and Dariko is also strong but i i have side dress so i just pop the back row like i don't i this is not a threat to me so and i even get to mill this so i get to caius the unfortunate part is the dandy tokens force me to play into icarus whereas if i had if I hadn't milled, I could have gone Sidra Caius and then, or like Sidra run it over even, and she wouldn't have been able to Icarus, but it is what it is. No Icarus there. I'm pretty sure I have knowledge of Kalut from the whirlwind. Uh, so I, I don't mind forcing it out here. <laughs> uh, she doesn't have many cards, so like I feel like she can't just let the Cyber Dragon walk. Again, she's on pure. So if you attack pure builds on the axis of their monsters, they can just run out. <laughs> uh, so that forces out the clute, and I think that makes Avers live, or it makes it live with Foolish, maybe? I don't remember. <laughs> so she goes deck dive here and completely whiffs. Uh, that's another thing is like post board against Black Wings, you side into like Ryo. Um, you side out of uh, things like. I, I think I normally side out of like Sangen and other small cards. Sork also doesn't get hit by. Deck dive. Uh, this play kind of sucks, but it is what it is. I just wanted to pressure while she had two cards. <laughs> I thought, you're like super weak, so let's see if I can take advantage of that. Uh, but she has the oppression. But the upside to that is now this Gores under oppression could be insane. But she knows I have Gores. And she's locked under her own oppression, so she just can't attack me. I think we have several turns of this where we just like kind of draw pass. Here I actually have to smashing this because the gale threatens my gores. <laughs> um, the gale threatens my gores because if she attacks with gale, I'm forced to drop gores or else she, she might just never attack with the clute, right? And then if she has clute and gale on the field, she attacks with gale, I take 13. I have to drop Gores there because if I don't, then she's just never going to attack with a Clute. And then she gets to run over my token and then have the Gores in main phase two. And Clute would be able to run over Gores after it's halved. So it was a really weird situation where I actually had to smashing the Clute uh, because its attack was just enough that it hits over half of 2700. I think I'm still under deck dive at this point <laughs> for this next draw, and it was Caius. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I do really well under that deck dive. Um, and like I said, Caius is like your best play under oppression. So my hand is really nice, and Gores could even set up for a Caius play. Drawing Cat right after the deck dive fizzles out is really nice. I also can't Avarice. Because if I avarice under oppression, the things I draw are subject to- or sorry, if I avarice under deck dev, the things I draw are subject to deck dev. So I'm at four, and I figure that Cat makes her pay 800 and lets me draw off avarice, and she's still in the same spot where she can't deal the gores. She probably has to find an Icarus attack to deal with it. Uh, Raiko's pretty nice, but I can't summon it this turn, obviously. Oh. Airbellum is a really nice draw, because it's like, somehow it's the biggest monster on the field against the Black Wings, but uh, she didn't know that it doesn't rip. It only rips on direct attacks. <laughs> so that gave me a little bit of information that explains why she hasn't been able to do anything with a card in her hand, especially under oppression. I think she has a she has a Sirocco in here, so if this is Bayou, I have to banish it with Caius, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. 
And even if that's a Nicarus she just drew, she can't use it. And now, now that I actually have board presence, I think I just set my traps and allure away the course. Because <laughs> she's never going to play into it, right? <laughs> so I just say, like, okay. And she gives up. So once again, you smashing to play around, like, everything, collute, especially. And then I get to potentially rip. We've seen how strong ripping cards can be. It forces out a mirror force, which is like, okay, I'll take that trade 10 times out of 10. <laughs> You're going to trade mirror force for for my Bellum. Uh, I just want to keep Black Wings off the field, especially for Blizzard purposes. She already had one. So, but honestly, bottom, bottomless thing that Bora didn't really make much sense. I probably should have just held that bottomless, I think. Not sure, because if if she does attack with Bora, and it's like if I if, do I really want to drop Trag there? If not, then I'm just like eating 1200, 1700, and I'm hoping to draw something that outs it. And Bottomless might be my only out for a while, so that was probably my thinking. <laughs> Is it like I might not ever draw an out to this Bora anytime soon? So you have to drop it now, and if I. Leave the bottomless set. She attacks with Bora. I drop Trag. She can Icarus away the Trag and my bottomless potentially. So I'm always worried about like leaving two cards on the field. She ends up hitting those two <laughs> with her Icarus. And now I still don't want to drop Trag because it's just too small. So Tomato's a really good draw. Even if it's Kalut, like, I'm fine there, because <laughs> I just float. Speaking of floating, <laughs> also it's a dark for my Sork, which is nice. And I do summon the Sork, I'm pretty sure, to banish this. Definitely want to do it in defense, um, because I think she was on, like, two darks or something. Let's see here. Yeah, she was on two darks, so if I leave the sword can attack, she can crash into it and make dad life. Whereas if I put in defense, she can't do that, unless she has like a Vayu that she can crash into Sangin. And said I missed Tea for a whirlwind. You're just thinking about dro dropping track, I guess? I do. Oh, because I know that off the thing and I'll be able to search a tuner and track being able to modulate level matters for that, obviously. So here she brink on the sork to finish itself. She maybe should have gotten rid of the track, but like if you think about track plus rescue cat is nuts, but most people probably wouldn't respect that. And I guess the track the sork was gonna be plussing every turn anyway, so I really don't know what she should have done there. <laughs> Um, Trag can like surprise people like that where they're like, uh, they think that their play is good and then like suddenly like they're in main phase two and they're like, damn, <laughs> my hand actually doesn't deal with this. So I think I go into Colossal Fighter because it plays around Kalut. Uh, Stardust is usually really good, but like, I don't know. Colossal felt right, and then I have a Solemn to protect it, so I don't need the Destruction Protection as much as I did with other uh, board states. So I think you still have an MST here for the Whirlwind. Obviously you don't want to Solemn that. <laughs> Mirror Force is also good. It was actually a really good draw because if I let the Shura go through, you can go Shura, damage step Kalut, and then uh, summon Gale off of Shura, and then main phase two make Armor Master, which would wall the Colossal. I would have had to Solemn the, the Armor Master. And so I felt like Mirror Force just made more sense and it gives me like tempo. I set the monk for Caius, but it doesn't matter because I'm just soloming whatever she does this turn. 
and that is how I beat back black wings back to back. <laughs> uh, so now I get to potentially get my revenge against Yomero. And once again, I'm going to lose RPS. I'm really not good at RPS. Uh, hamster? Yeah, I don't know what I was... I, I guess I was re thinking like maybe Snowman, because I couldn't think of what gets set in Divi Hero. Singing makes sense, I guess. And you don't want to set a hamster into a potential Caius, so... Yeah, I guess that made sense, but if it's... And if it had been, uh... If it had been Snowman, it would have forced him to pop the dandy. And then Dandy doesn't get banished, it actually gets to go to the grave, which is fine. But yeah, it's it's not a it's not snowman, it's singing. Banish that so it can't search out like a diva. He's very aggressive with this deck. Like, pitching there to put Plague in Grave is pretty aggressive. As you can see, I was actually expecting Caius instead of Greffer to be summoned on that previous turn. Here I make Android because Diva Hero is kind of a dark deck, but that's just wrong. I should make Cataster. Because Cataster can't get outed by Cataster or Ab Zero, which are like. Once again, the Diva Hero deck makes Cataster and Ab-Zero very easily. Pro set heavy. <laughs> and I think he's, yeah, he's just going to go nuts here. So I have to go Cat and try and book run over the dad here. But yeah, <laughs> gotta hope for no back row. Yeah, this is just kind of a lost position. I think I just like let this play out. <laughs> yeah, there's 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 nothing I was gonna do here. I didn't set that because I didn't want the dad to just get a free pop, but like it did not matter. I was losing this match or this game. So I let him figure out how he wants to play around gores and stuff. Once again, Raiko is the starter. <laughs> Sets up for a debris or an avarice. <laughs> Drawing Titanial isn't great. Uh, I think because I have such a, like kind of a weak hand here, <laughs> like these guys are not getting summoned soon. I didn't want to just like set debris and be passive. <laughs> I knew that by putting debris in play and synchroing it off, I'll put four monsters in the grave. And if the iron chain gets like run over or destroyed somehow, that would be five, which would get me into avarice. Iron chain is like kind of scary to make because I might be setting up like putting a water in the grave for him. But at some point I just felt like I needed to pressure <laughs> instead of just wait for myself to get killed. Uh, Wing Blast feels bad, but it's not the worst because Iron Chain. Iron Chain is honestly like really underwhelming. <laughs> it's really just a 25k meter with a negative effect. A 2500 beater. <laughs> uh, I feel like he probably should have attacked the Weenies instead of Colossal, but I'll take it. I'll take a big token. And having Smashing Ground is really nice for that too. I attack with Gores because the token's actually more defense, and if the Gores gets destroyed by uh, Mirror Force, then my Chaos Circ is live. So here he's able to clear my field with an Ab Zero.
so I definitely go for your sork here instead of the avarice. <laughs> um, I had five engrave, uh, but if you have an out to something, you just play the out and don't <laughs> gamble and hope to draw like two outs or something. Uh, I feel like I could not risk playing around torrential, so I just go for it here. Uh, here I think I made a mistake. I should have just summoned the Kaiku. Maybe I was playing around Mirror Force, I guess. But there's a strong chance that whatever he's setting here is just there because he doesn't want to lose it to Arabellum's effect. But yeah, I end up summoning Kaiku in main phase 2, which makes no sense to me. <laughs> um, it does eat a bottomless because it has a floodgate effect. I guess that makes sense. If I had summoned it in main phase 1 and then attacked uh, with Bellum, and he had Mirror Force, then he clears both. But if he has Mirror Force and has to clear the Bellum, and then I summon Kaiku main phase 2, I still get the Floodgate stuff, and I get to keep my monster instead of losing two. So I guess it's not terrible to summon main phase 2 with Kaiku there. Stratos is pretty solid for him. He goes for the Prodigy. I get to put the Trag up, and I... Trag is like, now that I have uh, Avarice live, Trag can get kind of big. Or is it not live yet? I guess it's not. <laughs> but 2400 is still, or it's, yeah, 18 is still solid. <laughs> now it's 24. Um, I do this so that he has to attack this. I mean, this, there's no way this is mere force <laughs> at this point. So I force him to kill the Trag and then I get Avarice. And it's a good thing I do have Avarice too. Because I set. Do I set both of these? Yeah. <laughs> and he clears one of them. He draws Miracle off the top. And I have to book it <laughs> so that I can actually trade uh, the Sork for the Ab Zero by running it over. I just set Raikou. That makes sense. Another Ab Zero, which is going to trade with my Raikou. So I'm actually like, this is another really good trade for me. <laughs> and Raikou also could set up my Debris and my Aberrets. He just, he's forced to set the Prodigy because he has so few life points. Uh, <laughs> here I know, I know what that card is, so I know I can get 200 extra damage before making the iron chain. Do I have the second Avarice life yet? Not yet. <laughs> um, still want to play around like Snowman Eater and stuff, I guess. I don't know. If it's Snowman, it's better to hit. If it's Snowman, I should have just summoned the Debris Dragon. And if it's Dine, I still should have summoned the Debris Dragon. So that didn't make sense. <laughs> He keeps drawing things that will save him, but it's too late because I drew Torrential and now I win. <laughs> like, there's no way for him to win with me having Torrential Dandy. So we're 1-1. One, one. <laughs> and I'm going second in game three. I don't know if you've noticed, but like, I'm only playing two Arbellum and I have not missed the third Arbellum. Even when you, you draw it, like, it's rare that you actually need to summon the two Arbellums. It'll come up, but it's it's not actually that necessary. So this is giving me flashbacks from my first game. <laughs> yeah, this is like last match all over again. Uh, okay, so the plan is most people attack Stardust into face downs in case it's like Raikou or um, Snowman, so that then the next thing that they attack with can still attack that turn. But he's too smart to be running his Stardust into a D prison, so he just does not do that. And this Raikou is just gonna have to mill only, I think. I 
I'm hoping he attacks the Stardust, but he's too principled. <laughs> yeah, here I can go for Cat into... Yeah, into Goyo. That makes sense. Again, that's why Foolish is so good. Because <laughs> it just gives you, like... It's an extender. It lets you make actually good synchros instead of just Catastro Android every time. You could run a level 3, but it's just really bricky. Like a level 3 cat target, like DD Crazy Beast or something, but like, what are you doing at that point? Or like Dark Panther. <laughs> what are you doing at that point? I think I probably... <laughs> here? I don't know what I'm doing. I should Torrential right here. It feels so bad to Torrential, because then... Let's see, he has four cards, I have three. And then he gets to have his whole main phase to plan out like the best plan of attack and everything, but I think Torrential makes the most sense because as you'll see, he can just like, I mean, I know he can just crash this in, uh, but even worse than that, <laughs> I didn't realize that until here, when he attacked, I thought to myself, if I don't flip this deep prison on attack deck, and then he uses book in the battle step to run over the Goyo, I just lose. So I actually had to use D prison here. I felt like I had to actually use D prison here, which is just worse. And then I activate this, but I'm like, oh, never mind. I'm not activating it. <laughs> uh, so I just lose my whole fo whole field. Like I use I lose D prison and all my monsters. So I was like, I should have just torrential. Uh, here I just go for Black Rose. So I lose the Torrential anyway. Like, <laughs> I really should have just uh, not worried about it. But, I mean, I think I'm obviously playing like far from perfect in these uh, matches and I'm still doing all right. So the deck is, it's, it's not trash. <laughs> and he's drawing Miracle Fusions every game. <laughs> So, yeah. Fortunately, I do have the smashing, which I sighted in. Smashing is insane coming out of the side. Like, I sighted in in so many different matchups, and Kaiku is an insane draw as well. I think off of this, I remove his only water and a dark to put him off of Dad. And obviously, the Kaiku locks out Miracle Fusion. Hmm. I think I just said fuck it. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, I get to keep ripping cards out. The Bellum as a surprise to just rip a card always feels so nice. Um, I chose not to banish with Kaiku this time because I was worried about like return or something, but it's like, I'm, I feel like I'm already dead to return. There's seven cards in here. One of them's Ab Zero, which can't be summoned, but like, there's so many cards in here. I'm already dead to return. Just keep banishing. <laughs> but he has nothing to Miracle Fuse with anymore. <laughs> so I figure I can make Arcanite and pop this back row. And since I'll have one pop left, uh, whatever he does next turn, if he sets a back row or summons a monster, he can't Miracle Fuse there because he doesn't have materials. No matter what he does on this turn, I can use Arcanite to pop it and then Titanial's exact game. Well, I would have 400 more, but you get the idea. And that is exactly what I do. So, Arcanite for the win, baby. <laughs> so, that was Loser's semifinals. And this is Loser's finals against Souls Manic. I actually win RPS for the second time. And Souls Manic is, uh, he topped, I think, Peak of the Peak 2. Speaking of that, actually, Gia also topped at Peak of the Peak with Black Wings. In addition to the Hero Beat top that she got in RBET. But Souls recently topped at Peak of the Peak with, uh, Flanvel, And he's also, like, pure Flanvel. Well, GK Flanvel, I guess. He's also a very accomplished current player. He tops, like, I think he topped the NAWCQ. Uh, 
a couple, lots of regionals, a couple YCSs, maybe. I don't know. I don't know his credentials that well, but <laughs> he's a good player. <laughs> so, those are bad mills. <laughs> mm, I don't want to set Dandy against the Fire Dog deck. It's just such good Fire Dog food. I maybe could have just full passed, but I don't think he's going to attack into Gores. So I just decided to summon Debris Dragon and say, deal with a 2500 beater. Uh, it's a little bit risky since they play Rekindling, but I don't know. Iron Chain is like kind of underrated, even though the effect is awful. Uh, just having a 2500 monster is okay. Like Guy at Night is playable at 2600. <laughs> and if I'm trading Deep Prison for Iron Chain, I think I'm fine. So Sidra matches up really well against Gravekeeper's Servant, which is what this is. Um, I know that his sets are like Hamster, Servant, or Snowman Eater, or even sometimes Dinah he'll even main from time to time, but fortunately it was like the best one of those for me, I think. He does a cool little play to get by out of the descendant that was in his hand but he doesn't attack because he knows to fear cores here i have the other sidra <laughs> i could go sidra bellum and run over both but mirror force was on my mind so i made stardust that's a big reason why my cyber dragon works so well with bellum and it let me go in for an avra so like i could potentially even mst the back row if it's another d prison or something if I draw it off the Avras. Uh, so yeah, run that over. Set bottomless. Because I know if you're like a Kaius or something. Or if he goes for uh, Magician to summon an 8 with the Spy. <clears throat> he goes for Kaius and I bottomless. But then I chain Stardust to negate my own bottomless. And then since my board is clear, I get to drop Gores and bring back Stardust in the end phase and then summon Cat on my turn. So his, his you know, he's, uh, his game is pretty much just over at this point. He scoops on the Cat summon. Powerful, powerful Rescue Cat deck. I made Iron Chain with the plant stuff. I made uh, Stardust with Bellum. Gorus is good in every deck, and then I threatened Lethal with Cat, so. Cat is a little bit underrated. <laughs> and I'm running 44 cards, still, and you still draw it from time to time. Okay, so I, I had to set Dandy here because all three of these monsters get turned on by Dandy. Uh, but I also wanted to set Solemn in case of a Fire Dog. Like, I was willing to Solemn a Fire Dog here, I think. I didn't really calculate it. I'd have to think about it again, but I really hate <laughs> having Dandy get run over by Fire Dog. I thought about Solomon this actually, because, you know, if I don't Solomon it, then I might just get my Solomon get picked off by the Descendant. And then Caius hit the Dandy. But <laughs> almost everybody will hit the monster with Descendant. So I thought to myself, like, because if it's, um, he has Pryo. On the descendant effect if i bottomless if i give he hits a bottomless and i chain bottomless and destroy the descendant like he gets nothing out of it um so i took the risk and i said i'm not soloming this you're a good player so i think you'll go after the back row but it's like a next level thing where <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i he chooses not to go after the back row long story short and I get punished because now he does Caius Might, which is like why I set the Solemn. Like I had Solemn for these like awful monsters that were gonna clear Dandy. My hand doesn't do a lot. It's four normal summons. I mean, Titano's like barely a normal summon, but she's a brick, so. Same thing. Have to set Raiko for defense. I ch There's no. Like, chaining Trapstone does nothing, obviously. So last game I ran over him, and this game he's running me over. <laughs> K 
Kais is a pretty bad draw there. And rekindling is uh, bad for me. So game three, this one's exciting. <laughs> this is a pretty, this is like a slobber knocker. Uh, this is a nice hand, especially going first, because I don't, I mean, it's fairly nice. I, I like these hands where it's only like one normal summon or something, especially when they can't dash shoot you. If they dash shoot you, put back your normal, then that's not so nice, but it, your whole hand is active from the start, and I think having an active hand from the beginning of the game is really, really important in this format, so I was happy with this, and Raikou is like the best starter in my deck. Here I... That's actually a funny one, because he goes Sidra and immediately went to the battle phase. If I'd seen he did that, I would not have flipped the trap hole. I was just worried about Caius, because I could I like I kinda have to protect this to an extent. If it gets Caius, then like you know, I'm just eating 24 every turn and I don't have any outs to it. So now that he has a back row, I set this and I drew gores. So now if he like attacks me, I can chain it and pop this and drop the gores, kinda like I did last game. <laughs> It isn't quite the same, but it, you know. He attacks in, I get to drop Gores. He probably has, I guess he doesn't have anything for that. So that's nice. <laughs> Heavy makes sense. Oh, this, uh, to clear this, I had to book it, book the dog. And then, like I said, since I know he runs Snowman Eater, <laughs> So, since this is the only monster I have, I've literally drawn Gores and Raiko this entire game. <laughs> um, and I'm up on, I'm up by three cards. So, I feel like I need to press the advantage while I have it. Uh, and the only way to do that is with a monster. So I MST the back row. And then I run into Gores, which sucks. <laughs> uh, but I have Smashing for Gores, so he can't clear my field without clearing his, and I have Brain Con, which is obviously a strong card, and I have Compulse Set, which deals with this token. So my idea was, you know, I thought about flipping it here in my own turn, and just like saying, okay, Compulse goes one for one, that's pretty good. But then it's like, I have token and brain versus whatever he draws. If he draws Rekindling, then I don't know. It just didn't feel like, I wanted to force him to commit to a play and then ruin it mid-play by compulsing his token. He draws the one punish to this, which is Caius. Uh, that feels awful. I don't want to... I'm still trying to not compulse this Caius because that's just awful. You never want to compulse Caius, but I kind of have to. That's why I ate the 24. Maybe I shouldn't have done that, but I, I think it's fine. Like if he draws, if I draw my own Caius or I don't know how many Sire Dragons are gone. No, none. So I have, if I draw one of two Caius or one of two Cyber Dragon, I can bring, I can bring on his Caius, hit him for 24 and then like set over it or summon over it. Summoning Caius would feel bad because I'd have to banish the Compulse. Uh, I probably would have to do that though, so he can't get Fire Dog to run over the Caius. But, anyways, I would I would end up banishing my own compulse there. But, anyways, I have to compulse his Caius back to his hand and just hope that it's dead. Hope that I can keep him off monsters so that he never gets the Caius live. But as you can see, that's not how things are gonna pan out for me. <laughs> so I get to eat another twenty-four. The prison actually clears the Caius. I have not drawn anything to help with this brain con. And at this point, like, now that I have 1300, anything he summons in attack is going to kill me before I get to use brain con on it. Like, he has to draw something that has less than 500 attack, and that's just not going to happen. Lumfire is a great summon, though. It's a great draw, that is. So, hopefully the Titanial can carry me to victory. I just have to start swinging... <laughs> and uh, hope that he doesn't draw anything. He's got like one turn. If he draws one card that doesn't do anything, then I win, essentially. Or at least that's how I thought. <laughs> uh, he has some spicy technology. So I draw a cat, which should mean I win. Because <laughs> uh, I should be able to summon two Arbellums here. And then 
obviously this isn't bottomless because you would have used it on the titanium. So I draw two, two air bellums. I run over this with titanium. I guess if he summons a gravekeeper spy, then he's like, okay, but then I just brain con the spy and make Arcanite and pop his back row and I'm like still in a fine spot. Um, anyways, he has like the only card in the game <laughs> that could punish me here. Obviously, Torrential would, but I know it's not Torrential or Bottomless. It is Needle Sealing instead. <laughs> and he's like, oh, is this Trap Stun? Because then you're fine. It was not Trap Stun. It's Mirror Force. Which does keep me alive, but then I get insult to injury. I draw traps down off the top. <laughs> and I'm just drawing these cards which are busted, but they don't do anything. <laughs> and of course he draws heavy there. Avarice is nice, my first Avarice in a billion cards, but he has Crow, which kind of explains why his cards aren't doing anything. I get to draw Monk, but Monk, my cat is gone. So like Monk at this point could summon Ryo, maybe, I think I cited out Tomato because you don't like it getting run over by Fire Dog. It could summon like, I cited out, out a Hamster for the same reason. <laughs> um, so I think it can summon Ryo and I might have cited into like a Botanical Lion or a Debris Dragon in defense or something. And the Debris Dragon thing actually does come up, <laughs> surprisingly. So my brain con finally does something, and something is, it becomes Ryo. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't attack because of Monk's effect. And the Ryo just ends up trading with uh, the Sidra, unfortunately. So he doesn't have anything that clears it, and then he draws something that does, while I drew all my back row removal and like controlling effects and stuff. Really unfortunate, because if this Dust Tornado had been like Avarice, I had one Avarice, one Bellum, one Sidra, two Caius, two Debris. So I had lots of outs. We both just draw kind of drew kind of very, very strange at the end, but I thought it was a pretty fun duel. <laughs> so I ended up finishing third. Uh, I lost in Losers Finals to Souls, and Fitz ended up winning the whole tourney. Uh, so I guess now I'll do a, like a light speed <laughs> deck profile explaining all my card choices now that you've seen the deck in action. This is self-explanatory, all the plant stuff. I thought about cutting down to one debris, but you like, like as you saw at the very end, like I'm just trying to find finishers. You want things that you can push with and debris is kind of that, even if it's just an iron chain, but most of the time it's like a black rose, which you actually get to use the effect with uh, by banishing a plant or it's a stardust or red dragon arch fiend. So. I think you really want two of these, which is why I didn't want to cut it. Caius is the same thing. You don't want to cut- Caius is an insane card, so you just generally don't want to cut it. And then also you need finishers. Um, so yeah, all this makes sense. The tomato is your bridge between the plants and the, and the cat stuff. You can go Lone Fire into tomato into one of these two, which gets you cat. Also, if you go like lone, like foolish into lone fire, you end on double lone fire titanial. Next turn, if your titanial gets dealt with, but like a mirror force, you can summon tomato off of a lone fire, which is often better than summoning a dandy, because um, tomato can actually apply pressure every turn. Um, also, uh, if you draw like your like lone fire plus titanial. That often feels bad because it's like, what is this lone fire getting? Like sometimes you will get dandy and it's fine, but sometimes you want to get something that isn't dandy, but you've drawn the titanium so you get the tomato. This card's just really good, really underrated. It also lets you float into Sangin, which sets up for Caius. Yeah, and let's and it's darks for Allure, <laughs> Allure and Sork. Allure is probably the weakest card in here, by the way. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. I think you need all three of these because Hamster is insane. Um, but Hamster and Cat pull from the same five cards. Fun fact, you can summon a Bellum off of Hamster. Hamster also sets up for Caius. I'll explain Hamster later. <laughs> but yeah, you want all three all three of these because they set up for your Avarice um, and your Debris. And they have a chance to mill Dandy, which is pretty rare, but still. <laughs> these are also like a great way to clear back row for your Monk and Cat pushes. So 
These cards are really good, and they're lights for Sork, obviously. We only run five lights, but you, honestly, this card is live all the time. You really don't have to worry about it. It's kind of wild. Sidros, as you saw, they're used to flip tempo. They can set up for Caius. They sink into level eight with Bellum. Uh, those are the main functions. You just need more specials in this deck. We have Sork, these two, and these two. So those are your only five special summons. Plus, like, Foolish is kind of a special summon, but it's a little weird. Uh, you just want things to synchro with that don't cost a normal summon. Speaking of which, that's kind of where a hamster comes in. If they go, ham if they run into your hamster and they don't clear it, then you have something, you can clear the back row with Raiko and then you have something to synchro with, either the Raiko or the hamster. Um, in fact, you could make a Mistworm. You can go Bellum, uh, Raiko, and Hamster into Mistworm. As you saw, Mistworm's absolutely insane. Um, often your opponent will have multiple synchros, um, or like a synchro backed up by some back row. You just summon Mistworm and OTK them. It's a really big like comeback card, where it just takes two cards to summon. Or even if you have if you have any level four in this deck, well not debris, <laughs> but if you have like Hamster or Tomato and you summon Cat, you have Mistworm. Uh, that's most, that's like most of the monsters. Sangin gets you to Monk, so it's hard to cut. Uh, you can't run fewer, you can't run one Bellum, because you saw how much I was like drawing one of them. Uh, you need to have at least one in deck, but I don't think you need three. I really haven't missed the third. And I want to, I'm trying to run as few normal summons as I possibly can, because I don't want to run more than 40, but that's just how it is. Uh, this card's really good. It's a free special, which you want lots of them. Uh, it modulates level, so it's really good for synchro plays. And underrated is that it. Oh, well, first of all, these two play through oppression, which is something you want to be able to do. Caius is a great play through oppression, but these two also can apply pressure by being big under oppression. But also, this card lets you get your monsters out of your hand. Sometimes you'll be bricked on monsters, and in being able to pitch them in steel you're getting like an insane value out of something that maybe would have been inactive for a few turns. Um, also, since you're kind of like filling the graveyard as part of your game, <laughs> uh, it has lots of options. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's also six. Yeah. So lots of different things and plus all of the synchros. So that's pretty, this card, I like it having it as extender. Uh, we didn't really see it in those games, but there's lots of times where you want to apply pressure proactively, and Cyber Dragons and these two don't do that. Trag sometimes can, but it's kind of rare. Trag works well with Tomato, though, in that situation. But yeah, um, like often you want to just be able to go like, okay, Debris, and I'm summoning Chaos Work, and just like be able to spit out like over 4,000 damage, which can be tough without having a card like this. There's a chance you could run Dark Arm Dragon, but running running Sork and Avarice already conflicts a bit. And I feel like running Dark Arm Dragon could conflict even more. And we're not running that many darks. We're running, what, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Not that many darks. Allure, I feel like you normally wouldn't be able to run Allure, uh, but it is also a pitch for Monk, so. But like I said, it's pretty underwhelming. This card can be really underwhelming too, but I think in the games that we saw, you saw that it uh, it was like an extender, foolish plus bellum equals a level five or level four. Don't discount our rear. Um, and then foolish plus monk or foolish plus cat. Actually, foolish plus monk is armory arm, colossal OTK. Well, foolish plus monk in another spell, because you go bellum plus token into armory arm and then monk plus token plus bellum into colossal and then foolish debris lets you get stardust as opposed to just having to make a seven so i feel like this card you just kind of have to run it even though it only has two targets it does at least help you um set up for sork and like sometimes you'll just go foolish so that you can use avarice and it's like a two for like you're turning two cards into two cards <laughs> book is really good i don't think i have to explain that it's a spell. You want to run spells for Monk. Actually, you don't need more than 10. I don't know if you saw that, but like in my games, I, I've run 10 for a while. And you just, I've just never needed more than 10. 
like every once in a while you like wait for a spell but like this isn't the other version of the cat where you're trying to get your monk play off as soon as possible this is more of like a wait wait for the right moment and then once you see a weakness you've been you've had enough turns to find that one spell that you're saving for monk but yeah you actually don't want to always set this as much as you would in other decks same with mst you don't always want to set it because there's a chance you might want to pitch it off monk something to think about these two cards are busted these two cards are obvious i like this because i don't like playing through a back row and it gives you fake pluses when they try and clear it and you can chain it also i like being able to do the gores thing where they try and attack through back row and you <laughs> flip this uh self-explanatory this card's really underrated just very good you want to clear monsters clearing monsters to make way for bellum attacks is very good uh these are all self-explanatory uh extra have to run this we're running side remain <laughs> have to run this because bellum plus a token have to run these two because it's rescue cat hard makes this or foolish plus bellum makes this uh this card's busted obviously this card's busted obviously this card you have to run because of debris which we saw this card's like the whole point of the deck so what are you doing if you're not running this this card can be a good stall tool there's also times where you'll go um debris or sorry what is it if you already have like an afd on the field and you've been stalling with it you can actually go like use debris special effect effect to special summon a card and then tribute that card for caius which can be good sometimes <laughs> uh, but mainly it's just like another thing to summon if your black rose is gone or if you don't want to waste your black rose yet uh this one is self-explanatory i'll explain this later uh really good level eight you have to run this because of <laughs> we don't have to i would suggest running this because of debris you don't want to run stardust as your only level eight option mistform as we said this is like the best mistform deck period uh, this one you make through Cataster and Bellum. Or, or you can make it through Trag and Bellum. If you go Trag, copy Cyber Dragon or Trag, copy Android or something. And then use Bellum to sync with it. Um, it might not sound like it comes up that often, but if you think about it, Foolish plus Cat equals Dark End if you have both Bellum. Also, Raiko plus Cat. Also, just having the dandy two dandy tokens naturally plus Cat. So yeah, there's lots of times where you are making a 8 and you can just choose to climb through the cadaster. Also, if you do that route <laughs> where you go, where you use a Ryko in like two Bellums to make Dark End, you've put the Ryko in the grave and you've put the cadaster in the grave so you can summon Chaos Orc next to it. Having ways to clear monsters in main phase two is just really, really underrated. So I'd rather have Dark End here than like Thought Ruler or anything else. I've tried it and I think Dark End is just have a really, really good option to have. Plus, you could potentially like brain con a level 2 tuner and synchro with Caius. Side deck, I don't know if it's worth talking about. I side these in against Black Wings because you want to be less weak to deck dev and the effect is like okay. Uh, it's good against zombies and Machina and stuff. This card is really underrated. This card I would not side anymore. I, j I was just like, I used to play Cold Wave Main. I took it out. I didn't miss it. I would not play this card. Uh, Trap sounds really good for deck dev and Icarus. And it's good for oppression too, where you can lock them under their own oppression uh, while pushing their playthrough. You lose to frogs. Every set monster deck is going to lose to frogs, basically. So you need rugs, I think. You might see cards that are cuttable, especially in the spell and trap department, but <laughs> I've tried that. I feel like you're running, at that point you've run too many normals. You could run, you could cut hamster, but I think we've learned that hamster's kind of busted. It's a really, really good card. Uh, you side it out against frogs because it's too slow but mocking index are playing hamster values playing hamster light swans playing hamster like it's just a good card it's really worth running and it sets up for caius which is like just nuts dimitri on my team he's really smart i don't always agree with him about everything but he's very smart and so i take his opinions into strong consideration and like his view is like brico isn't good hamster is good so you're, you're not running hamster because you run Raiko. You're running Raiko because you run hamster, kind of. That's some kind of like butchering of his opinion, which I, I can understand because this is like actually a plus and it could be a plus too. Um, 
So this card might seem cuttable. I don't think it is. This card is so good. I, when I side it out, I miss it. It's, I still think it's correct to side out in some matchups, but this card is so good. I think you should really, if you are thinking about cutting this, you should try it out and just have in mind that you can go Lone Fire into it or, you know, it's actually funny because these are the only two targets. So every once in a while they will, uh, you won't have a target for it. Sometimes post board Crow is a target for this just so you can summon Kai's, which is funny, but I do really like this card. I want to play two. Uh, so I'd mess around with a build that plays actually more than one. Yeah, it's pretty much everything. I think too many Avarice Bricks, as you saw. Sometimes I had two and I couldn't even activate the one. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, this is like my pet deck. Um, I've been meaning to make a video about this for a while. Uh, I just wanted to put everything I knew about the deck into one place, one video, so I'm not going to make another one again. <laughs> uh, unless I, I, I guess if I like top with it, I might do a quick one about it, but this is my camellia cat compendium <laughs> so i guess with that i'll see you later please support the channel by subscribing and adios